So how do you prepare a sermon? <laughs> I'm always asked this question. And so the irony of that, that question, the irony of the answer, I should say, is that while I am a very uh, structured person in terms of the way I learn, you know this, mm -hmm. you know, I, I consider myself to be concrete sequential. Yeah. And so I like everything step by step, but I'm very eclectic mm -hmm. in terms of the way I prepare to preach. And I think that one of the reasons why I'm like that, I finally discovered a descriptor uh, that explains my preaching preparation style. In the book, um, Preaching with Power, I think Dr. Uh, LaRue is the editor for that. Mm -hmm. Alice Burgey Bryant, we'll let Alice Burgey Bryant talks about the difference between a surfer and a sergeant. Mm -hmm. And she basically says that a, sur a sergeant is the type person who has a structured routine. The surfer moves according to a rhythmic and creative pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's really the way that I, that I, that I start to prepare my sermons. It's, it's bathed really in prayer. Mm -hmm. And so in many instances, my, my sermons arise more out of life-led experiences than text-led experiences, although I can um, read a text and, and find inspiration for preaching. For the most part, though, I, I would say I'm a student of, of the word and scripture, of, of the word and culture. And so I, I think about ideas when I'm preaching. Um, and because uh, I have a deep commitment to um, social justice and prophetic ministry, uh, I'm often thinking about what's going on culturally. And so oftentimes I'm thinking about that when I'm preparing, preparing the sermons to preach. And as a pastor, I'm always exegeting the congregation. I'm thinking about what is happening with those persons who sit in the pew, not just in terms of what they're hap what's happening with them existentially, but I'm thinking about the different age groups that I'm talking to. Uh, with the intent of trying to reach reach them as well. So I would say it starts with meditation and uh, it's bathed in prayer and then from meditation it goes to, you know, observation and interpretation because I read all kinds of periodicals. I'm always looking for ideas because I think it's important to connect with the audience. And then once I land with, land on an idea or a scripture that really grabs me, then I start with my uh, interpretation, which is the exegesis. And then from interpretation is application. And from application, you know, we pray to God for transformation. <laughs> so <laughs> I am a, what I would call a student of the new homiletic though. When I, when I, when, when I enrolled in seminary, um, much of the preaching classes or much of the books that, m most of the books I should say, that our preaching professors recommended to us were books by uh, Eugene, uh, Eugene Lowry, Fred Craddock, uh, and of course Henry Mitchell. Yeah. And so, and, and I was already preaching that way anyway, yeah. but I learned some of the other skills in terms of narrative, the way narrative preaching works, inductive preaching, using RLEs or real life experiences to introduce uh, sermonic uh, uh, thoughts and introduce sermons. So do you prepare a manuscript? Oh yes, yes. I, I always prepare a manuscript. I can preach without a manuscript, but um, I've just always written my sermons out. Uh, and, 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 and even though I can be spontaneous, because I'm struck, I'm concrete sequential mm -hmm. and I don't want to miss anything and leave anything out. Right. I have a tendency to rely on my manuscript, but I'm not tied to it. You know, you, most of the time I try to prepare my sermons well enough in advance so that I've internalized it. Mm -hmm. So that if the iPad decides to go out mm -hmm. <laughs> or the computer decides to act crazy or whatever, I still have it in here, but I typically do I always write my sermons, write them out completely, I don't use outlines. <laughs>